Perfect. Well, thank you very, very much, uh, Mark, for having me um, and Dr. Liddell and just the UTC Career Development Center for having me uh, join in this session. Um, as soon as they asked, I knew immediately that I wanted to jump on and participate um, because when I went to college, there was nothing like this. You know, my education was great, but it was very much just very classic education based. So when it was time for me to get out into the quote unquote, you know, the real world and start working and start doing these, these things and taking, needing these skills that they didn't teach you in the classroom, I was way, way, way behind. Um, you know, I didn't know step one on how to look for a proper job, let alone write a correct resume, do a great interview. I mean, I think back on my interviews that I did now, you know, back then and look at them now and just cringe and just think, God, it's no wonder I didn't get hired how terrible I was in my interviews and I didn't even know it. Um, so I think just the opportunity of you guys doing something that's specifically geared toward this really speaks to UTC's um, willingness to embrace the future of education. Um, so I think this is awesome. Um, long story short, my name is Janelle Hawkins and I am the director of, my title's kind of long, but I'm the director of engagement, innovation and well-being. Um, I'll explain what that is in just a quick second. Um, but I have been with Vision Hospitality for a little over three years now. And I really truly adore working for this company just because of their focus on people and the way they approach business, um, it's such a much different sense towards, especially its associates employees than most of the other companies that I have worked for. Um, so unless they kick me out of here, um, I'm gonna be sticking around with Vision Hospitality for quite a while um, in my career. Um, but what I'm gonna be talking about today, um, what they've asked me to present is something I actually kind of laughed to myself. Um, it was about, but it's about negotiating, uh, negotiating salary and offer letters. And I laughed at that for myself because that was one of the things that I was so completely, utterly terrible at and really didn't understand that you could negotiate those things and you could have a conversation about that. So I said, yes, absolutely. Uh, let me jump on there. So I'm going to go ahead. Um, give me just a second to I'm going to share my screen uh, with you guys. So just make sure you guys can see my presentation. All right, and also just go ahead and like I said at the very beginning, I'm very conversational. I don't want this to be a lecture or any kind of training for you guys. I want this to be really opening, uh, open learning for the people on the line. So you guys can go ahead and take yourselves off mute. Um, feel free to jump in with questions um, at any point, um, but I'm going to go ahead and jump into oh, salary negotiations uh, and benefits and offer letters and what does that look like in the corporate world. Um, so again, just a little recap on the Mind the Gap. Um, I'm sure you guys have probably seen this already if you've been participating in these sessions, um, but we're gonna be together for about 30 minutes uh, total today. So just whatever questions that you want, this is your learning time. Okay. So again, there's me, um, that is my title, the Director of Engagement, Innovation and Wellbeing. What that is in a nutshell is my role, I work on the human resource team uh, here for the company. So my role is all about the team members. How do I engage them? How do we put together programs that make this a great place to work? Um, how do we become an employer of choice? How do we make that working environment truly something that the team members love being at day to day? So that includes a multitude of different subcategories, uh, the main one being training. Um, so I am responsible for the training for the company. Um, but different communication programs, all the internal communications that we have sent out um, are technology driven from our communication platforms. Um, and then also linking that in with the community as well. Um, and the well being, just in the fact that if we have team members with issues, if there are problems, um, sending out pulse surveys, um, you know, doing, uh, making sure the review processes are going the way they should, that is kind of main, the main, the subcategories that really make up what I do for a living. Um, so there's my LinkedIn uh, profile if anybody does want to connect with me. Um, I'm very also engaging with the community. I did go to UTC and actually teach an adjunct class for UTC. So anytime students reach out to me, whether I know you or not, if you say that you're a student trying to learn, I'm going to answer your question for you the best way that I can, or I'm going to at least give you my perspective. And I think that is a tool and a resource, again, that students you have at your disposal now um, that I did not have back when I was in school. There was no LinkedIn when I was in college. And had there been, I think it's great when people are unafraid just to ask a question. 
How do I write a better resume? You know, if somebody wants to send me their resume and have me butcher it, I love doing that. Um, just because again, I wish I'd had that opportunity. So there is my LinkedIn profile for you guys. Um, but getting into some of the nitty gritties, um, go ahead and getting delving into our topic about salary and benefit negotiations is, um, I completely believe this, but I also find it disturbing, but a survey by salary.com revealed that only 37% of people always negotiate their salaries, no matter what, but that 18% of us never negotiate it. Would you guys find those numbers surprising? No, I'm seeing some head shaking on there. No, probably not. Would you guys know right now that you can negotiate any salary or any offer uh, for any job that you want to take? I know that you can. I just don't know how to go about it. <laughs> okay. Well, I'm going to help you with that a little bit today. But yes, I'll go ahead and put that out there. You absolutely should negotiate or at least ask questions about any offer that you take. Okay. We'll delve more into that in just a second. But Here's the thing is that even worse, um, again, the salary.com numbers, 44% of respondents to this particular survey claim that they've never brought up the subject of a raise during their performance reviews. Now, salary negotiations up front, that's one thing because you don't, you don't work for this employer yet. So not understanding how to negotiate with somebody that you don't know, that can definitely be scary. But this one is the, the real factoid that I find disturbing is that you're afraid or you have some type of issue that's blocking you from talking about a raise with your own employer. You should absolutely have a relationship established with that employer to where you should absolutely be asking about your salary and wage. This is your life. You know, this is your control over your finances. So to have that kind of open dialogue or to not have that open dialogue with your employer to me, tells me a lot about what type of relationship you have with that employer. And again, is that a good employer to be working for if you are not able to ask those type of questions? So the biggest reason that people avoid this topic is fear. They think it's going to backfire on them. They're unsure of how to do it, um, just like Amanda just said, or they just don't know to. You know, there's just not a comfortable topic. Um, so today we're really going to try to push through some of those first layers of, of the fear of it and just saying, hey, it's okay, employers now, again, me working for an HR team, we expect to have these conversations with people. We're fully prepared for these. So don't be afraid and start off by just negotiating just that hourly salary if you are in an hourly type of position now. Okay. All right. So. Again, if you're on mute, take it off mute because I want to know, has anybody here on the line, have you ever bought a car? Or if you've not bought a car, some type of major, larger purchase. I've bought a car before. Okay. What were some of the things, is this Ashton? Yes. Hello, Ashton. What were some of the things before you made that car purchase? What were some of the things that you did before you gave them all of your money? Um, well, I first like, figured out kind of what I was looking for. I can turn my camera on. Sorry. I didn't realize it was off. Good. Um, I first kind of figured out what I was looking for in a car. So whether I wanted like a bigger one or um, like a smaller car. And then I kind of compared gas mileage. I knew that was going to be important because I was going to be using the car to drive back and forth to school. So I wanted good gas mileage. And then um, I also tried to figure out like how much insurance would be because I knew that that was going to be another cost that I would have on top of purchasing the car and then I just kind of like bounced around and, and test drove multiple cars before I like set my heart on one of them. Perfect so basically in a nutshell you did not take because cars are not cheap you did not take your 10 or 20 or 5,000 or whatever amount that was you didn't just say here dealership give me that one and here's all of my money. Right. Of course so I'm gonna make this real easy for you guys, is that salary negotiations is just like buying a car. And not just that you're buying a car, but you're also selling your own car at the same time. Uh, I don't know if you had a trade in Ashton at the time, but you are buying a product from your employer. Your employer is gonna be giving you a salary, a workplace, a work environment. You're gonna be buying that product from them. You're gonna be committing to that product. So just like Ashton said, just like the buying of the car, you need to sit and figure out before you agree to go and work for that employer, what are your priorities? 
she said it perfectly. She was like, hey, I'm going to be driving a lot. I'm going to be going back and forth. So I need to look at gas mileage. Is that an important factor? Okay. What are the insurance costs that are going to be associated with this? What are the features that I am going to be looking for that is a good fit for me? That is absolutely one of the number one things you do before you ever even apply, really. Like before you even get to this step about negotiating, uh, negotiating your salary and your offer, you need to be figuring out, is this a right fit for me? What are the features that I'm looking for? You know, do I want heated seats? Do I need, oh, again, the gas mileage that's going to get me all over the place. Do I want an SUV? Do I want a minivan? What, what is going to be that fit for me when it comes to my employment? So the first thing that you always want to do is you have absolutely got to research. Okay? What does that research look like for what are the features of this job? That are going to be a fit for you. Okay? And so many people forget that when they're talking about looking at a job offer. There's so many, and again, I did this. I was always, oh, well, I just want a job. Just get me out there. I'll take whatever you got. You know, I know I'm young and inexperienced. Just put me out there. What ends up happening to a lot of people is they take that first offer because they're so afraid of, of not understanding how to get another one or not having the confidence that they're going to get another one. They end up in a situation where you're not happy. It's not a good fit for you. Maybe you're not being paid what you're worth. Maybe those benefits aren't where you want them to be. So always do your research before you get into it, at least before you apply, but if not then, way before you get to this salary uh, piece of it. So you always wanna take a look when you're talking specifically about salary, what is the market value of that job? Because just like purchasing a car, I expect to pay a different amount if I'm buying a Mercedes versus if I am buying a Ford pickup truck. I just fully expect that. I know that. I understand that, you know, a Volkswagen bug has a different value automatically attached to it than a Tesla does. So you hear this a lot, um, or at least I've heard this a lot through my career of, of your value Yes, you absolutely should know what value you are also bringing to the table, but those have to match. I think the job that I do at Vision Hospitality is worth a million dollars a year. I think I kick butt and they can't replace me and I'm awesome. They're never going to pay me that because the market value of my job is not a million dollars a year. So yes, it's that balance between you need to know what value you're bringing to the company but you also need to have that real, realistic expectation of every company has a budget. Everyone has limitations. Again, every job is worth a maximum of a certain amount. Your task is to know what that maximum is and get yourself prepared so that you can command the maximum. That is the ticket to salary negotiations. It's not about saying, oh, well, I want you know $100,000 so many times. I do interviews on behalf of our company, and I'm always going to ask first, as the interviewer, this is an all classic trick the interviewers use, I'm going to ask you first, what are your salary demands? What are you expecting from me? I'm not going to throw my number out to you first. And if you come at me with a completely ridiculous number that's not anywhere close in the range, that's your death knell already in this interview process, because that's telling me that you haven't done your research and that you have unrealistic expectations. I mean, I had one time I was sitting in an interview and I was interviewing for a support role for me. I was basically interviewing for somebody to be my assistant. And when I asked her that question, she threw me out a number that was higher than what I was making. And I was like, okay, clearly you don't have a grasp on what this job is or what the market value of this job is. So you need to match that. So that's also why you need to have a range prepared. Of, yes, I know what the market value of this job is, but here's also the extra things that I'm going to be bringing to you that I'm going to really be stellar at this job. So this is why you're going to pay me this higher end piece of that. So you need to do your research. So some research tools for you guys. Again, Glassdoor, um, payscale.com, there's a ton of websites out there that did not exist um, when I was going to college that are there now. Information is everywhere. You can do research for the position, whatever that be you want, whether it's an HR, whether it's a tech corporation, whether it's a medical field, 
you will very easily be able to find out what is the wage scale, what is the market value of that job. And remember, keep in mind locations. Um, if my exact same job was located in Los Angeles, I'd probably be making about 100,000 more dollars than I am here because that the, the geographical area does play into that. So make sure that when you're doing this research that you're taking a look at that geography um, with the job title along with that. Um, Robert Half also has a really good Robert Half Accounting. They put out a resource um, every year. They put out a, an estimated salary guide. Um, you can literally just go, this is the direct link to it. But if you go to Robert Half's website, you can download um, and request their salary guide and it breaks it out by um, different industries. So this is at least another really good, great starting point to help you figure out well, what are companies paying for this job? That way I'm not going into that interview and asking for a completely num ridiculous number that doesn't make any sense. Do your own wage survey. This is something that my HR team, we do once a year uh, on behalf of our company for our managers. So they know that they're paying fairly and within a market value, but you can do this for yourself. You can call around to different companies and say, hey, what do you pay this? You know, I'm a college student doing research. Do you mind telling me what your number is? Some of them will tell you, some of them won't. Um, but then again, find recruiting, find hiring managers, find training managers on LinkedIn, connect with them and just simply ask me. Again, I'm, I'm different um, than some people. Some people might say no, some people might ignore you or not wanna answer that question, but a lot will. So many people, um, especially in my age range of, of who now see this, all this burgeoning technology and all this different ways to connect. And a whole group of us wish we had this back then in the day. So we're very open to helping uh, college students and people just getting their first start in this by saying, yeah, I'll be happy to answer that question for you. So you never know until you ask. And that's the other thing is that if you don't ask the question, you already, you, you're never going to get the answer. So don't be afraid of also hearing the word no. So how do you get more money up front? Okay, once you know the market value and you know that there's a range, how do you command the higher end of whatever that market value is? Um, and in a nutshell, you need to be a stellar candidate. And what I mean by stellar is that yes, even the jobs that you worked that are not your quote unquote, you know, your real jobs, the drive through at the Chick-fil-A, the retail associates, you know, at the Target, the front desk attendant or the housekeeper or those jobs that people traditionally take to help get their experience started out in line. Being stellar in those, you'll be surprised how they propel you forward into quote unquote, the real job that you do want. Okay, That's going to teach you life skills such as flexibility, being able to work with people, being able to diffuse stressful situations. Okay. So I think um, I was, I had jumped in on the last part of the call. I think Amanda, you said you already work in hospitality. What would you think is one of the big major skills that working in that industry now has taught you that's gonna help you in any other career path you go into? I think really just dealing with people because that's uh, like 90% of what my job is, is just um, interacting with people. So uh, sometimes you interact with people who've been on the road all day. They're maybe not in the best of spirits. So uh, that's really got taught me a lot of emotional intelligence in itself. So bingo. And so that skill, if you're reflecting that during your interview, you're being that stellar candidate by saying, I do have this. And by the way, here's my real life examples of that and how I diffuse that situation or how I made that guest experience better. That is you being a stellar candidate because the more stellar candidate you are, companies are going to flex and bend for candidates they want and like. Meaning if you have the proven skills, if you have successes to back up what you're telling me for the job that you want, then I'm going to be willing to pay you on the higher end of what my range is. But it's got to be there. It's got to, you have to demonstrate in your interview process that you know what you're talking about and that you really do have these skills. So can you negotiate hourly pay or is this only for salaried offer positions? Should you, if somebody's going to go for a job at the subway and be a sandwich maker, should you argue what they're going to pay? What do you guys think? How many of you have done, has, has anybody done this, gone to your, your, your 
go to apply for a job and it's an hourly position and they said, okay, we're going to pay you $10 an hour. Has anybody said, well, I would really like 11. Has anybody done that or anybody known that you can do that? I'm seeing head shaking. So yes, you absolutely should. Okay. But again, know your range. Don't ask for anything ridiculous. No. And because this is going to start teaching you these skills earlier. And if, even if the hiring manager, if you say, Hey, again, this is one of my earlier jobs, or I'm doing this as a practice, you know, uh, you're offering me 10. I really think I'm work, worth 1050. And here's why I already possess customer service skills. I already know how to diffuse stressful situations. Uh, I have a proven track record of being on time. I've never called out to a shift uh, ever before at another job. You start telling me these things, again, as a hiring manager, you've taken the initiative to think about yourself in those terms. And now you're selling me your car. You're saying, but I've upgraded the air conditioning or I've got the latest Bluetooth technology um, and I put the top of the line GPS in here. You're instantly adding on your own value when you do those types of things. So yes, you should absolutely practice and go ahead and say, yes, let me, let me ask for this. Now be prepared for them to tell you no and come back and say, well, this is our standard pay for this range, but thanks for asking. Because that's, again, to me, it's gonna show me your tenacity. It's gonna show me your willingness to step outside of the box. Now, again, it's all in how you ask. Okay? You don't want it to backfire on you and you don't want it to appear like you're money grubbing. Oh, I want $12 an hour and you pay 10. Okay? You gotta do it carefully and in the right way. Um, but doing it just, hey, I really think that I'm worth 1050 and here's why can really, you never know, they might say yes. All right, so here's the other deal about talking about job offers, okay? You are here to consider the entire offer package, not just the salary, okay? Your life at work, no matter where you work, is gonna be revolved way more around than just what you get paid. Okay? And again, now we're talking more salaried positions. When you're talking hourly positions, most of their offer packages, it's gonna be a standard set. But if you're going to be a manager somewhere, if you're going to be a higher up uh, position somewhere, you need to think about the entire offer package, okay? Because work is gonna affect your happiness level. And that's the most important thing. When you're talking about negotiating uh, your salary, your benefits, your employment package, what's gonna make you the happiest? I used to work for an employer um, that paid me pretty significantly above what Vision is paying me now. I took a pay cut to come to Vision, but there is no way on earth that I would go back to that company because of how miserable it was working for that company and how miserable they made their employees. At the end of the day, the money was just simply not worth the happiness level. So again, thinking about the story, like what Ashton was saying at the beginning about her car and she's brought up insurance and gas mileage. The gas mileage outweighed maybe the color of the car or the make of the car or any other factors that she wanted to consider on that. Okay? She was like, I need gas mileage. Well, I need happiness. And here is what's going to give me personal happiness in work. So what is that for you? Again, it's different for everybody. Salary, yes, is going to be a big chunk of that, but vacation time, paid time off, your flex time, okay? Working conditions, are you going to be working from home? What's your reporting structure? What's your, um, you know, are you going to have five different bosses that are going to ask you for the same thing five different times? All those types of things you need to be talking about in your offer package. Okay. Because if you did not get the salary you wanted, if the company comes back to you and says, this is our max dollar amount, okay, which again, every company has a budget. So be prepared for that to happen. What do you, what can you do? Okay. Other benefits that you can take a look at that can affect your life happiness. PTO, paid time off. I was negotiating um, a move uh, before I came to Vision, a previous job. And with my experience and the offer they were making me, I looked at them and I said, the salary is fine, but I want you to bring me in on the year two, the, the, the tier two PTO, um, which PTO, how it normally works at companies is you work for a company for a year, you get a certain level of PTO, and then you work for them for two to five years, you get another level of PTO and so forth, and it moves up with your tenure. So I looked at the offer and I said, I agree to the salary, but I want to go ahead and jump into that tier two of PTO. I want three weeks in my first year instead of just the standard two. 
And they agreed to it um, because the, for the company, for a dollar amount for the company, that's not that much in dollars for them. So to them, they, that was a value add to them that they said, oh yes, we can get her this to us relatively cheap time off. This makes her happy. It's agreeing to her and now we're getting the candidate that we want. Okay? So PTO is definitely a great one to negotiate. Okay? Your job title, okay? A job title doesn't cost the company anything, okay? It's can you tweak it? Why this matters to some people is what is it going to do for your resume, okay? Is a simple change in a job title, uh, you know, instead of being manager of recruiting, is it manager of recruiting and, again, employee relations? That can make a difference on your resume for a job that you want later, okay? So that can be a good one to negotiate. Your health benefits start date. Again, health benefits traditionally you have a waiting period at companies can say, hey, I want my benefits um, to be available to start one month earlier than your standard beginning package. And you never know when a company says yes or no to those things. Relocation expenses, are you moving to take this position? And if so, negotiate them, uh, the company paying you to move to be closer to them. Performance-based bonuses, maybe they can't come up on your salary, but maybe you can say, well, I'm gonna do a good job for you. And if I make these X metrics, pay me a bonus. And that's a great way um, to increase your salary without the company having to commit to it up front. They're going to put that ball back in your court and say, okay, prove it. Get us these uh, results. Cell phone reimbursements. Again, another small one, but an extra 50 or 100 bucks a month, an extra $1,200 a year um, is just straight on added to your salary. And then have a renegotiation date set. Say, okay, I'll agree to this offer letter. It may not be the salary. It may not be the package, the whole package I want but can we renegotiate in 90 days? And always have that in writing. That's very important that there is, no, again, talking legal terms here, nothing is set and bound. The company does not have to do it unless there's a date and two signatures on it, yours and theirs. So make sure anything that you're negotiating that you always get the agreement to in writing and signed. Okay. And then uh, flex hours is another good one. Can you work remotely? Some positions you can, some you can't. Um, but flex time, you know, if it's a nine to five office, say, hey, but, you know, I live in Cleveland. I want to avoid traffic. Can I work seven to four? Something of that nature. Okay, so I know that was a lot of info. Um, and I know we're out of our time already, but I wanted to open it up to you guys to questions that you might have on this. So um, yeah. as, as some other people are coming up with questions, I, I do uh, wonder if you have uh, thoughts on, so like for me, uh, working at a public institution, I'm technically a government employee. And so there's a lot more rigidity in what the salaries are. And also that information is public record. So you Correct. can, even though you're not going to have much flexibility with it, you can at least know that up front. So what are your thoughts on, are, um, what are your thoughts on like uh, working public sector versus private sector and how does it change some of these approaches? So outside of teaching an adjunct class for um, UTC, I've never worked in um, the sector that you work in, um, but for, for most people that I know who do work, like for example, like a, a institution, university, that type of thing, <clears throat> it's public access, so they already know what they're getting into. As far as how you can make your life better at work in that sense, that's gonna be a lot more non-negotiable things. Like you said, it's a structured package, health benefits are what they are, vacation time is what it is. For in that sense, what's gonna affect a lot of people is the people that you're working with. So it's not so much an offer or salary negotiation, but the people that you work with and the people that you work for, i.e. mostly mainly the, the, your boss, the person that you're going to be reporting to, they can have a massive effect on your happiness level at work. So I would say in your particular case, it's not so much about a salary negotiation, but I would interview the absolute living heck out of the person who I was going to be reporting to. I am going to be drilling them. I am going to be getting to know them. Do I think I'm going to like reporting to this person? <clears throat> Is this for person? You got to, again, think about your priorities. I need high gas mileage. Okay? I need somebody who's going to train and develop me because I need to move forward in my career. So if development is your main goal, then you need to be asking those questions geared towards how you think this company is going to develop you. So different kind of sense when you're talking public private sector, but good thing to also keep in mind, I don't care what job you're going into, interview the absolute living crap out of that person who's going to be your boss. If you think that they're not going to be a good fit for you, then don't go and work for that company. 
What else? All right, well, it is 11.35. Um, so I am gonna go ahead and say thank you. I appreciate it. I hope this was helpful for you guys. Um, my LinkedIn was up there. Um, uh, Mark, I believe you have a copy of my presentation. So if you want yes. to send it out, um, whatever you guys need to do or need further from me, again, I'm here to help. Um, I really appreciate opportunities like this and let me know if you guys need anything further. Thank you very much, Janelle. I did want to say that uh, Mo dropped in the chat that um, um, he tracks the larger projects and initiatives, keeps a running list within the department. Um, so uh, that would be um, used as your resource during your reviews, et cetera. So, um, so yeah, so there's lots of different things. There's like keeping track of, of uh, running list of what, what can be done at the job as part of uh, what you should take into consideration as part of your uh, overall package. So that's great. Um, yeah, so I think we are, um, we're definitely over time. So I'll, I'll go ahead and wrap it up here. We have recorded this session. It will be available on the um, <clears throat> on the website next week. And then this uh, uh, presentation is also available so that we can, um, we can definitely uh, send that out to you. And uh, yes, connect outside of this, find each other on LinkedIn, talk to each other um, and uh, deepen those connections. So uh, thank you so much, uh, Janelle, for your time today. And uh, I'm gonna go ahead and wrap this one up and hopefully we'll see some of y'all at the next session. Thank you. Pleasure. Thank you.